Hello everyone, welcome back to the Red Quills for this video on starting your fantasy world. I've started with a pencil sketch here so we can go over the details. It's got a, a pencil outline of where the map is going to be, a timeline on the right hand side. I've got a legend here and a compass on the bottom left. I'm going to use these compass points here to uh, create a culture for the world later on. So this is just going to be a quick tutorial as we draw this map on where to start your fantasy world, what you're going to need to do to build the culture and the people as you're sketching it out so you can get it all on one page to use later. So we're going to take this 0.7 millimeter black fine liner pen and we're going to use it to very quickly draw out the shape of the continent that we're going to be putting our world on. So we can decide the scale later. I'm going to put that in the in the box, but this is going to take up about a third middle, both upwards and across. So the center of the map is going to be the main continent. And then we can have the um, the adjoining islands up there. It's always best to give your continents a real feel to start with a very large landmass to begin with, and then slowly work your way out and give it more and more detail in the small islands. That'll make it more believable. So we're going to have a little southern continent there and a bit of a northern continent up there. But because, as, as, I, as I said before, this is going to take the center of the map so we've got some space to the left and to the right and to the top and the bottom. So our focus is here in the center of the map. So we can really enjoy all that space. I am going to use up that top left portion up there. So I'm going to have some islands, a bit of a wilderness up there. But the focus of the eye is going to be drawn to the center of the map here. All right. So we've used the thick fine liner for that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to make the, the C's. The C's take up everything else. So I'm going to get this uh, 0.7 blue fine liner pen. And I'm going to quickly just go over where the edge of the map is. I'm going to use blue to denote where the edge of the map is uh, if it's over water. Just because that's a really easy way to tell where the continents are and where the oceans are. All right, let's zoom in now. I'm going to use this fine liner here. This is a 0.4 to do the mountains. Now, I've had a few requests to show this process, so I'm going to start out by drawing a jagged line like this. Make sure there's lots of peaks in it, lots of troughs in it. The more jagged it is, the better. And then from the part of the map that you're looking from, the bottom of the map, what you're going to want to do, I'm just going to show you on this uh, little mountain here that I'm going to put little towers on, is you're going to want to put little diagonal ridge lines coming off that jagged line. So if I start here, you see I've got a little, few little diagonal lines coming off the left there. They're all at roughly the same angle, and they will come off the jagged line where it changes direction suddenly. So you see, uh, if, if I see a part of the jagged line that goes off to the left in the same angle as the left ridge lines, that's a natural place for that ridge line to go. And the same on the right hand side. And the more you do it, the more practice you have with it, the better it'll look. And eventually, if you just keep applying it, don't overdo it, and mix up the length of the ridge lines as well. Uh, if you've got uh, a part of the ridge line that doesn't have any, you know, noticeable areas where you can put a left ridge line or a right ridge line, just come straight down, make it um, more jagged. But consistency is good here in terms of the direction of the ridge lines, and then you can vary the length of the ridges here. And when you're done, you're going to have this really nice looking, very aesthetic, appealing look for your mountain lines. We're going to come back later, and we're going to shade one side of those mountains in. Uh, so that you, you've got a bit more uh, three-dimension kind of look to it, three-dimensional look. So it really jumps off the page when you look at it. So that's just a really quick introduction on how I do the mountains. Uh, it doesn't really take very long. Obviously, I've sped that up. And I'm going to, just so you can see it again, I'm going to do another one of these tower mountains here. We'll use those to be landmarks later on. So that's the main continent there. I'm going to do a few more quick looks at the, the mountains on the top and the bottom, continents in the north and the south. But most of the attention when you draw a map like should be in the, on, on the focus of the map. Unless you're making a map as a part of a world map, 
Um, if it trails off and has fewer details on the exterior, then that's fine. That's to be expected. Uh, a cartographer won't know the geography of the whole world when they're creating a map. All right, so we've done the mountains now. I think that looks pretty pretty schmick. So I think what we'll do is we're going to move on to the next next part of the map. So what I'm going to do here is I might, now that we've got that set out, is I'll use this red fine liner, which is also out of point three, by the way, to taking a look at that division again, that left and right, that up and down, using our oceans, we're going to have to figure out where the labels are going to go to really balance what the map looks like. Uh, before we get into that, I'm going to name it first. So I'm going to call this the realm of actually, while we're talking about this, uh, I think it's a really good point to think about what your theme is. So in this case, uh, you know, I've really been talking about you know, left and right and up and down of the balance of the map. So we're going to make it about balance today. And uh, we'll talk about elemental balance, the balance of past and future, the balance of civilization and nature. And I will call it uh, Balanthe because I'm not very imaginative on that front. And I think that works really well. So in terms of balance being our theme here, I'm going to start using this red pen to dot out where civilization is going to be. Uh, just, you know, a big square dot for the capital, large circular dots for important cities, small circular dots for villages. And I'll put some towers out there as well. I love towers personally. I'm a very tower kind of person. Bit of a wizard vibe from me. Now I'm going to name everything. So because the round's called Balanthe, I'll make the main town Balan. Nice and easy, uh, very derivative, but hey, you know, no, one's, no one's perfect. As we go through, I'm just going to use a similar naming style on these mountain cities, which I'm going to use a triangular icon for to, you know, denote that there's a mountain dwelling conglomeration there. You know, they could be dwarves. Uh, I think in this case, they prob I probably will assume that they're dwarves. But they can really be just, just another, they could be a republic or, or, or an empire separate from the one on the lowlands, from the, the Balan people. Right, now I'm just going to start naming the areas. You name the towns first. So you locate the towns first, then you name the towns, and then you name the areas. So I'm going to name the Bonar Plains there. The Istere, I'm going to call this Dindor, Stangdor, and Yugaba, I think has a really nice evil sounding name. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on this compass rose here. And I really like the balance idea. So what I've done is I've drawn little symbols for elemental runes. And they are in balance. And we can use those as direction points. So up here I'm going to put a little rune for ice. And down here, I'm going to put a little rune for fire. Our continent is in the northern hemisphere. So around the equator is a really hot kind of area. And around the poles, there's a really cold area. So those are our two directions, polar and equatorial, north and south. And then I'm going to have east and west. And let's assume that the sun, like ours, travels from east to west during the day. So east is day-wise and west is night-wise. So you've got day on the right and night on the west. And now I'm going to just put some others that I'll consider to be, you know, mixes of those elements. So I'm going to have uh, a lightning on the, on the bottom left. I'm going to have forest on the top right. I'm going to do cloud there on the top left. And I'll do stone on the bottom right. And those will be our, our eight elements. Now, this is just a really quick one. Obviously, if you disagree with my elemental balance, you're very welcome to do that. Um, but this is, just, this is just an idea, and I will probably just name them after Norse or Germanic kind of rune names. I think that's just easier for me. And I'm just going to quickly draw out this compass row so I don't have to worry about that later. I'm just going to use... Um, red and black nice little geometric shape here it's called a compass rose for a reason and i think the more flower like it looks better the more appealing it becomes 
And you know, now that I'm I'm doing this, now that I'm thinking about it, oh, I'm using a thinner pen here, by the way. This is a 0.1 millimeter fine liner. You'll see several sizes of the black fine liners that I use. Now that I'm working on this compass rose, to go back to what I was talking about, I might actually fill the middle with another rune. Now that I'm looking at it, just to finalize that balance, we'll, we'll have nine runes, which really lends itself to a three by three grid, to an alignment chart, if you want to go that way for your role playing games. And I might make it the overriding rule, like a, like a, like a godly rune or a power rune or a king rune. Actually, I like that. All right, I'm going to finish just shading this in with a very, with that thick 0.7 fine liner that I've got here. And you can use your own fine liners. Uh, this is just a gray one, just so I can get some shading in there. And here is our king rune. I have made that up off the top of my head. I'm just going to sharpen it so it looks a little nicer. When you are using thick pens, if you want things to look better, don't be afraid to go over what your thick pen has done with a thinner pen, just so you get that look of kind of sharp edges, because that really kind of rounds out the look. Don't be afraid of doing that. All right, just finalizing that rose part of the compass rose with a bit of red there to draw the eye to the king room. Now we're going to go back to the map and finish off naming everything. Now that we've got that idea of a balance and the elemental runes, we can really start rounding out the ideas of what we're going to be dealing with on this continent. So that's going to, it's the realm of Balanthe. We've got the Isles of Fern up the top. I've really kind of Celtic named them. Uh, I love Celtic names. I've got some wilds up to the north that are going to be icy because the north is the, the ice direction. These lands to the south are going to be fiery, inhabited by you know, fire elementals and, and deserts and nomadic tribes. We'll call it Volungar, which I think is a really cool name. And the top, you can see two peaks of the continent there, and I'm going to make them two ice-bound islands, so I will call or well, one of those, the, the east part, one of those, the west part. Because again, I think implying a wider world, even if you don't have to draw it, makes your job easier when you're building a world. So Aberan East and Aberan West are ice bound, trapped in an eternal winter, completely un, inhospitable to mortals. All right. Now I'm just going to very quickly label a few of the the water bound places so the reds of course for land bound places the water is for the, the red the sorry the blue is for water so i've got the strait of drowned ships i think gives it a bit of history there the broken bays i think because that's like it looks a bit broken it's not like a nice bay like that one on the right which is the bay of gore Bit of an Easter egg for everyone. I put gore somewhere on pretty much all of my maps. If you go and look on, my, on the blog sites, um, I'm going to call that Willow Gather. The, the DH in Anglo-Saxon languages is a, is a soft of the, so it's a Willow Gather. See if Salissa. And I will call this one, I'm running out of names now. I'm just going to call it the the sun, dawn kissed sea. All right, now I'm going to go through and do some rivers. Always a good idea to do mountains before you do rivers because the, I mean, only anyone who's, who has studied geography can, can say the course of the river is determined by the geography of the land around it. So you want to figure out where it ends first. So bays always form or generally form around the mouth of a river. So those little inlets, uh, those little concave uh, areas of your coastline, they'll be where the rivers let out. And then you can you have to connect that to a high point because water flows downhill. So you connect that to a high point in a wiggly sort of way, and you got a, you got a river, you got a nice looking river. Okay, I think that's probably enough. I'll just dot out that one, and then. Actually, I haven't got any lakes. I will. I'll add in a couple of lakes here. 
And then, just for aesthetics, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the coastline with the same blue uh, fine liner. This is actually a 0.2 millimeter fine liner pen. So it's a little thinner than the mountain one and the red one. But at this point, you've got three conflicting colors and they'll draw the eye in different ways. So the black, thick, the black needs to be thickest because it gives you a defined continent. So that's the boundary of your world and your eye is going to be drawn to the interior of that boundary, more or less. The red draws the eye. The more red concentrated in one place is going to draw your eye more. So obviously calling, having the, the realm of Balanthe and this big block red letters really draws the eye. You know what it's called before you know anything else. And then the cities being red dots and red labels will draw your eye after that from bigger areas to smaller areas. Just a really simple color rule for you if you weren't aware of that. I'm going to have a quick grid system drawn here. So you can see I'm doing it now. And that's going to, it's going to look good. Um, but I'm also going to make that a scale. So every grid is on the, on the page that I'm using, five centimeters by five centimeters. And five centimeters on the map will be 100 miles because I decided that. It's always good to decide your scale very early on, by the way. Uh, you can decide later on if you, you really don't care about that kind of thing. But um, knowing how far someone can travel in a day or a week or a month is you know, pretty handy when you're designing this. So those squares being uh, 100 miles across make this island, it's, it's, I go beyond a large island. This is like a subcontinent kind of area. All right, now we're going to go into the timeline on the right-hand side. You can see I've got a red timeline here. It draws the eye a bit more. And then in a brown pencil, I'm going to sketch out five ages. When you're doing a timeline, before you start putting dates down, you're going to be tempted to do the things that happened immediately before because you know those happened. Start big and then work your way to specifics. So do the ages of the world first and figure out what those ages are. It's going to really help you figure out those points. And then you can move on to the transitions between those ages and then on to specific points on the on the timeline. Okay, so I'm going to go through here. I've aligned these towers with the elements on the compass points uh, because I'm clever. So we've got, you know, Tor East and Tor Ill for ice and fire, you know, Tor Dagger and Tor Knot for night and day. And I think that gives us a bit of uh, interest there. I'm going to go through and I'm going to start sketching out roads. Now on the timeline to the left, I've outlined a few things there that I think can really give us some uh, something to work with on the map. So what I'm going to do here is I'm doing an old imperial highway that leads to the capital, to Balan, and has been abandoned because on the timeline I've said that there was imperial Balan. Um, because it's on the timeline, it's in the past, and therefore is no more. So I've got normal roads and I've got a big, thick imperial highway that ends uh, in, a, in a bit of a wilderness kind of area, a bit of an abandoned area. Uh, now, roads are really good on a map, uh, not just to um, show where people can go, obviously, but they determine where civilization reaches. So that's a good kind of thought for you to have when you're making a map, is to ask yourself, where does civilization go and where does it stop? So I've just outlined there the rage of Solon Bar, which is going to be really interesting world building to work with. And as I kind of fill out the rest of the map here, I'll have areas of wilderness and I'll have areas of civilization. And you'll have a, a, a touch of both because the theme of this map is balance. So we're going to have balance here. We've got old and new. We've got civilized and wild. We've got the eight elements and the king rune. And I think that really kind of works. The whole scale of this map from the very beginning when we measured things out and this continent is rough in roughly the, the central ninth of the map. So one third, one third on each side is, is wilderness around it. And this is a nice little balance area. 
So I set up the camera from, from this side so you can see me sketching out these areas quite up close. And, and I think this really helps you to see this really kind of tiny marks that I'm making here. It's, I'm working on quite a small scale in person here. So this is a 0.3 millimeter fine liner pen. Uh, and it's, it's going to take me a while. This piece of paper that I'm working on is A2. So when I scan this, um, I can blow it up because I'll scan it in, in a, in a very high quality. I can blow this up to, um, you know, A0 so that it's, it's details become larger, it becomes easier to read. Uh, so I wouldn't be afraid of working quite small. It means you take longer to finish a map. But uh, don't be afraid of taking time to, to work on a map to help you flesh out all these details. You know, the, the longer you spend on the map, the more time you have to think about, you know, what, what connects this place to that place? What, what's the history of this place or that place? You know, what, what is Tor Sky and why is it in Yugabad? What, what, what do they mean? What is it all about? What does it do? I always like to add in jokes on my maps as well. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to work on some history. So you can see this is me working in real time. The three dot gathered there, I'll just make ruins. You can see I've added the West Wonder and the East Wonder, which I'm just going to world building wise say that this is a place that was abandoned. So there was, there was a Carl in Standor on my timeline. And we'll say that since then, this place has been haunted. It's called the Howling. You know what? I'm just going to call it the Howling. I quite like that. Um, I can't think of another noun, so we'll call it the, the Howling. And it's filled with ruins and mist, and the only safe way is not a road. It's from the West Wander to the East Wander. And whether you make it through to the other side is entirely luck, but you have the best chance between those two points. I will also put a temple in here somewhere, just so we really condense our history in this area. And I'll call it the Pens. Yeah, I quite like that. There was a cull long ago that ruined the cities of Stendor, threw down their towers and killed their people. And since then, in order to buy passage of travelers from the West Wander to the East Wander, the monks of the penance spend their days in apology to the ghosts of Stendor. I like that. That's fun. So I've named a few more things. As you can see, uh, the plane of broken peaks there. And I'm going to go through with a green pen now and start doing foliage. So you can see I'm using the green pen here, which is my base green, which is the light green, to do farmlands around the major cities. Now, this is just honestly, this is an aesthetic choice. But large cities have a larger catchment area of how much arable land needs to be around them in order to support their population. So you need to have the majority of your population be farmers when you've got a, a, a you know medieval or renaissance society. So the large cities need to have a considerable area of farmland around them, or they'll need to have a very, very good line of trade to secure all of those critical resources. So I'm using two shapes of tree here. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with an oval one on the south side of the continent and a triangular one on the north side. So we've got you know oak trees and elm trees in the south and we've got pine trees in the north. So I think which really shows when we look at it later on, you can see that one side of the continent is cool and one side is warm, which I think goes to that balance. North of the continent is ice. South of the land is fire. And in this really gentle, safe space, you'll get warm and cool. You'll get wet and dry, but you don't get the extremes later on. Oh, I've just realized I've done, um, I've called, I called it one of our planes and I did some trees. Oh, well, we'll figure it out. It's a happy little accident. As another illustrating instructor once said, and we'll figure that out. It's no big deal. When you make a mistake on a map, don't it's not, you know. Find a way to 
excuse that in the world building that you'll be doing later. So we've got the Rage of Solomvar there. We've got Bonar Plains there. Maybe there was a battle long ago. And instead of planting gravestones, they planted trees. And that's why the trees are there. But stuff like that helps you really build your world. I'm going to go through with a second color here. I'm actually going to use three colors of green for the trees. Because, so we, as we said before, we've got the black to show you where to look, the red to draw your eye, the blue gives it a kind of calm feeling, and the green's going to be the rest of the map. This is the, this is just the, the illustrating. This is aesthetics. It does give you some information, but don't be afraid to make this part a little bit more kind of varied. It doesn't have to be as clear cut. It doesn't have to be as, you know, striking or interesting to, to look at. It's got to be, it's got to be nice. So I'm going to use three different shades of green. And in that way, you can kind of tell that it's a gentle kind of place to live. I will put some some more difficult areas. Uh, so I'll put a plane of of stones in the south, and I'll 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 probably sprinkle in some some light blue trees in the north to to denote snow. I think in the wilds, from the wilds to the north, I'll I'll, I'll put some blue trees, in, and that could be snow, and then you can see more of that temperature difference as well. But um, so different kinds of vegetation here. You can see I, I have got the forests, I have got the farmlands, I've got the marshlands in Yugabad there. And as you can see here, it's coming out quite nicely. You can see there's no details on the north. The timeline is all filled out. Every part of this map is filled with details that adds onto that timeline and the compass on the right here. So the realm of Valente has all of its details there. It has a scale. You can apply that scale to the whole map using the, uh, the grid on the ocean. You can see that the balance is still there and it's turned out quite nicely. Thank you for watching this video, everyone. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, please let me know in the comments if you have any further questions and I'll be coming out with another instructional tutorial next week. Catch you then.